Welcome to Thursday, December 11th, 2025, your day with a podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, another day of high winds across the region. While the winds weren't as bad yesterday as they were on Tuesday, they're still going to be a nuisance, still very strong. Watch them on the interstates. And then we're going to be looking at the winds not going away, but at least they'll be a lot more manageable heading into Friday and the weekend. We're going to see Arctic air again in the far northern areas, and then we're going to see record cold temperatures in many areas of the upper Midwest, parts of the Great Lakes. We had the coldest temperatures since 1984 in the Yukon yesterday. Now, some of you are saying there's no cold, there's no winter anywhere, and that's true right now in many areas. But for some areas of Canada and the United States to our east, it's a completely different ball game. So mild Pacific air will dominate the western half of the nation through the weekend and into a good part of next week. And then there's going to be a readjustment of the weather pattern across the northern hemisphere next week. So the very mild Pacific air that's here in the west is going to get shoved across the rest of the nation and areas that are going to be 20, 30 degrees below zero in the upper Midwest this weekend will be 30, 40 degrees warmer or more by the middle of next week as this big air mass of the Pacific air in the West pushes across the country as the jet stream will flatten out as the polar vortex will go through a realignment. And with the realignment in the higher latitudes, that will bring the change in the weather. Then the big question is, well, what happens next? Because what happens next? Well, if you look at the calendar, it's Christmas week. What's going to happen Christmas week? It all depends on how the realignment of the polar vortex goes and that blocking pattern that we've been showing you in the Pacific comes into the mix as we'll see whether or not it changes or not. Lusk, again, I think is the sunrise capital of the world here over the last couple of days. Another beautiful shot there in Lusk. And wow, how's that for Rudolph showing up in your backyard? Boy, that's a big buck posing very nicely. And uh, the cloud pattern that we've been under with a lot of this Pacific moisture streaming in, making for some beautiful shots. How's that for a shot of Angel Peak in the Wind River Mountains? Clouds cleared out just in time to get a shot for that. And just beautiful cloudscapes across the region. There's a beautiful one along the Laramie Range near the Wheatland area and across southeastern Wyoming and all across another shot from Lusk there, I think of the same cloud formation I just showed you earlier. So get out and enjoy, if the wind doesn't blow you away, these beautiful colors. And for you sky watchers, yes, the aurora did come out last night. The coronal mass ejection, which was expected to put on a show the night before, fizzled. But when it wasn't supposed to happen, well, the coronal mass ejection kind of snuck in and we did see some Aurora Borealis last night in many areas of the United States. And you can see that right there briefly. The satellite imagery looks like the exact same sat satellite photo I've shown you since Monday. It hasn't changed. We have the pipeline, the atmospheric river coming into the Pacific Northwest, arching around the high pressure along the West Coast. The Arctic air is bottled up up here. And the water vapor loop, again, looks just like every other image I've shown you all week as the pattern basically is stuck, stuck in gear right now. Here are the outlooks for winter weather advisories across the United States and the high wind warnings across Wyoming and Colorado. We've been talking about Alberta clippers. Well, boy, look at that trail of winter weather advisories across the U.S. as those Alberta clippers come on down. Notice how narrow the band is, and that's typical. The narrow band of heaviest snow doesn't tend to have a very wide extent to it. But along the path here, you can expect icy roads and poor travel conditions. And then the Arctic air and mixing with that Pacific moisture are going to bring significant snow to Montana, western South Dakota, and North Dakota, as you can see there. Then more rain and flooding in the Pacific Northwest, but a lot of the nation south of this boundary, there's just a whole lot of nothing going on. When we look at the jet stream, you can see why with the pattern with that block in the Pacific, 
And then there we go with those Alberta Clippers lined up. And there you can see the very strong winds aloft along that boundary. Reason why we have so much wind is those winds are coming in at an angle to the Continental Divide. But as the Arctic air starts to shift to the east Friday and into the weekend, this boundary of high winds will kind of push off the Rockies. And so that won't eliminate the wind, but that will reduce it. If you wonder why the winds are the strongest right here, it's because that's where the temperature gradient is the strongest. And you can see right here where the temperature gradient is the strongest between the bitter, bitter cold. There's the cold air over the Yukon area and eastern areas of Alaska. You can see that's exactly where the winds line up. And you can see the temperature anomalies by Saturday. Now this is by Saturday around noon mountain time. So you can see the extent of the Arctic air and the extreme difference from one side of the divide to the other. This warmer Pacific air that is quite impressive. This is what gets pushed eastward next week as this Arctic air will transit across the New England area, then out into the Atlantic and then things shift. Precipitation is right along that boundary. This is through Saturday, and there you can see the heavier snows for Montana. Northeastern Wyoming gets clipped, but it will be the Dakotas in the upper Midwest. Zero going on here, and that'll be the case well into the early parts of next week. Across the United States, you can see the path of the snow, the Great Lakes getting heavy lake effect snows from Buffalo in the Northwest Pennsylvania, Northeast parts of Ohio, then into the Michigan area, then into Ontario. Eventually some of that winter weather will get into New England. And there you can see the temperatures by Sunday morning. Anywhere you see gray, it's below zero. And you're gonna see record cold temperatures right here, 20 to 30 degrees below zero or colder. After that, this is where the shift takes place. So this is where we are now. And I want you to pay attention to what we're seeing up here. Notice that we have three areas, three pockets of very cold air. The polar vortex has split into three vortices, basically, and are rotating around the globe up into the northern hemisphere. And then here's our omega block that's going on out across the Pacific Ocean. So what we're going to see over the next seven days is a realignment of what's going on up here. The three different vortices will start to consolidate. And if we take a look at a northern hemisphere perspective, like we're looking down at the North Pole, you can see one, two, three on this side of the globe, then a more cohesive east-west vortex of cold over into Siberia and on the other side of the globe. And there's your classic omega pattern right here. So this omega pattern right here is keeping westerly flow from the Pacific into the western United States. And as we mentioned, this is what's driving the Pacific air into the west. So what we have to see is a realignment of everything and get readjusted for things to change. So this is where we are today. But when we look at where we're going to be by next Tuesday, so this is next Tuesday, notice we have a reconsolidation, a cold of, this is extremely cold air, northwest of Hudson Bay. So we're getting a reconsolidation of everything. The omega block still there. So we still have westerly flow into early next week into California into the Rockies and the desert Southwest, but the westerly flow goes across the whole nation. We don't have the dip right here like we have now. So when we look at a global perspective from the Northern Hemisphere perspective, looking down, this is by next Tuesday. There's your Omega block. We've got a low cutting underneath it with the high pressure ridge right there. The westerly flow will be strong. So there's gonna be a big warm up. When we take a look at next Tuesday compared to we are today. So this is today and this is Tuesday of next week. So with that westerly flow, we're going to go from temperature anomalies like this on Saturday to temperature anomalies across the United States by next Thursday like this. So you can see there's going to be a big warm up in the Great Lakes. A lot of this cold right here is just because of snow cover. Snow is deep up there and getting deeper, but you can see a large part of the United States is going to get a warm up from the Pacific air flowing through. Now we're going to cycle through the pattern 
with that warm up through the middle part of next week. I do need to mention that towards the Wednesday, Thursday time frame of next week, we will have a couple of frontal boundaries coming through that will interrupt the warmth a bit. And that's one of them right here as we get into Wednesday night and Thursday. That'll be a, a mountain snow producer and will probably bring, I hate to say it, another high wind event to the Rockies the middle of next week. But you can see the consolidation of the polar vortex right now over Northwest Hudson Bay. There's the Omega block. It is still there. So we still have westerly flow deep into next week, flooding the zone with Pacific air. What happens after that? Well, that's a good question because once we go into the 20th of December, so a week from this Saturday, we still have the Omega block, the European model still has it very robust, which means we still have the westerly flow with the polar vortex consolidating right here. We have two big vortexes, one over Siberia, one over in northwest of Hudson Bay, and in between is the Omega block right here. Now, the Omega block will eventually break down, and once it does, that should allow the westerly flow here to become more northwesterly here. When will that happen? It could happen as early as next weekend or that process starts. It may wait a week later. There's a discrepancy between the long range modeling, which you would expect it to be. The European model is holding on to the Omega block, which by the way, is a European model bias. It just holds on to them too long. The GFS model by next Saturday is starting to weaken the block and notice the axis of the block, if we were to draw an axis through the high pressure ridge, is different by a lot. So if you have the axes different, then the American models are showing that the polar vortex is beginning to send a spoke into Western Canada than the Pacific Northwest by next weekend, while the European is not. So we're just going to have to get into early next week because all of our Christmas week forecast is hinging on the Bering Sea. But the realignment and the readjustment of the polar vortex will change things up eventually, but it's gonna be 10 to 14 days before those bigger structural changes really kick into gear. And complicating factors even more, especially with the modeling, is there's another stratospheric warming event. The latest stratospheric warming event that happened in late November is responsible for the record cold in Yukon, the record cold in the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes we're gonna see this weekend but the record cold has been directed, not in the West as we know, but more into the Northern Plains and the Northeastern part of the United States. But another warming event is taking place right here. This is as of this morning. When we go out to next Saturday, you can see we have a North-South stratospheric warming event that's expanding and growing rapidly. Now that all coincides, by the way, with what we're gonna be looking at over here in, in terms of possibly changing that Omega block out in the North Pacific. So there's a lot going on and obviously a lot to try to figure out. Don't forget our regional travel forecast, especially with dealing with the wind. You can find that on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.